Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ritika, you can also. Yeah, okay, great. So now, as you people are in 12th standard, so basically the burden comes to you people that, okay, you have your boards and you have to prepare in a very good way, right? Everyone will be telling you the same thing that you have your boards, you have your boards, you have your boards, okay? So for Ritika, uh, I already know her. So I know her uh, economics, like how much she likes. But uh, Vanisha, I just want to ask you, like for you, what economics is all about? Like, uh, like for you, it's a favorite subject or it's like, okay, okay, or it's like moderate, like, just explain your experience, like whatever you did in the 11th class. Uh, Mom, economics is fine. Like last year, I studied it on my own. But uh, this year, I feel it's uh, quite vast and uh, a bit trouble in that. So that's all. Okay, okay. So that means you don't have any problem with economics, right? You are like cool with that. Because you did self-study, yes, so that means obviously you are cool with that, right? So great. Okay, so both of you, you are on the same page. So I don't have to bother much. Okay, for Ritika, uh, the subject is quite cool. Okay, so now let's just start. So basically, we are uh, now 11th class, the things were limited. Limited in the sense like everything was being prepared in the school and your teachers are like, okay, these are the important topics and all that. But for boards, because you are going to appear for the boards, so you have to study each and everything, right? So each and everything, that means that whatever you are going to do, right, that is going to affect your marks. Right. So, for example, it's not like that. I'll give you four questions that, OK, this is this, this is this, this is that. Read them. No, that won't be helping you. Maybe I'm giving you four questions that. But in exam hall, unfortunately, nothing came from those four questions. So you have to prepare the chapters and each and every topic in very good way. Like you have to prepare every possible question which the examiner can say, because right now you uh, it's not about only particular school. It's about the CBSC. Everyone who is in different school, who is in government school, public school, uh, course, uh, like this co-ed school, any, everyone, right? They are going to set the same paper. So they have to keep everyone in uh, the page, right? So we are going to study in such a way that no matter from where the examiner is going to set the question, we are going to, we are able to answer it, okay? So now you are in uh, this 12th class. So basically you are going to have two books. In 11th, you had two books. Now again, you had two, you will be having two books. First one is macroeconomics and second one is economic development, right? Macroeconomics is full of mixture. Mixture in the sense here you have to do numericals. Here you have to do theoretical part. You have to clear your concept. You have to draw the diagrams. Diagram in the sense like the graph and all that, right? So you should be ready with all these tools. These are the tools of economics. You should have all the skills with you so that you can score very well, okay? So these are the units basically, but for Indian economic development, the only thing is that you have to learn the theory part, right? Now, see, scoring 100 and 100 is very easy in economics, right? But the only thing is that here you will be writing something, you will be getting the point. But here it's all about theory, right? So the way you are presenting your answer, it's going to be very important. Right. So here what happens basically where students do mistake is like, for example, I'm teaching you the history or not history, basically the pre-independence thing that before independence, India was like this. Then after the independence, India became like this, the entire story. You got it. Now I gave you the question that right four factors that were affecting the Indian agriculture during the eve of independence. You know the theory particular part. Now what you what students usually do, they write their story. They know everything in their heads, the entire story, they'll write it down. But they didn't get good marks. Why? Because economics, they are asking you about the fact, right? They are not asking you about the theory. This is not a literature subject. This is theory, theory subject, but not a literature. Literature is all about story, right? But here you have to mention the facts, right? So I, there is a very thin line between literature and theory, right? So you don't have to cross that. Don't make in an economy the literature one it's not literature whatever you are studying whatever points i'll be giving you try to learn them in the same way like i'm not asking you to just mug up it but if i'm giving you any point just explain that point no need to add your own points right so i'll try from my end that i'll give you the best material and uh, even uh, like what i do like i always refine the handwritten notes and so many things all together just to give you the best thing so that you don't feel like because you have to remember all the concept till next year because your boards will be next year in 2024. So if you are learning them with a story, with a figure with you, 
then you can easily recall it during the exam hall. You can, it, it will be easy for you to revise. But in case if you will mug up it, you cannot remember it for a longer period of time. So my thing is that I'll be giving you everything in such a way that it's going to help you in the long term as well. Right. And how I teach, basically, I don't ask you to take screenshot. This is for Vanisha. Varitika already know how I teach. So wh whatever I'll be teaching you, first I'll explain you everything with the help of PPD. Then I'll give you five minutes to write it down. Right. Though it will take time, but I don't want to because if I'll ask you to take the screenshot, it's easy to take screenshots. Right. But screenshot remains screenshot. They never get converted into notes. And I don't want you people to do this because, of course, even if I'm a student, I'm teaching you one hour, right? It is not possible for me to take one more hour to make the notes, right? As a student. So similarly, I consider this with you people. So whatever we will be, see, if I'll ask you to take screenshot, I can cover four topics. Though I will complete three topics, but I'm okay with that. So that you people are like ready with your notes. Even after class, if someone will ask you or you have your exam, so you can quickly go through the notes. You don't have to run to the screenshot. Okay, I took screenshot on this particular day. Oh my God, what to do, right? So you will be making two notebooks. One is for macroeconomics where we'll be doing the macroeconomics thing and then the Indian economy. So we'll be balancing it sometime like one, like first we'll be completing the macroeconomics then we will uh, do this Indian economy, then macro. It will be a mixture. I'm not going to do that. Okay, completing macro and then I'm going to mix it up so that you people don't get bored. Theoretical, numerical, it will be a mixture for you people. Clear? Okay, great. So now, first of all, very first thing is that you have to write this table. So on the very first page, sorry, on the very first page of your notebook, you will just write this economics labels and then you will write part A, introductory macroeconomics, one, two, three, four, master income. Now, before writing, I'll just tell you, uh, uh, just stop this chapter, like over here, whether you have to do numericals or theory. Okay. So national income, this is for 10 marks. The most, not toughest, but student consider it toughest. Right. So this is tough chapter, tough chapter in the sense here you have to do theory, numerical, 70% numerical, right. And the concept, these three things. Okay. Money and banking, a little bit, 20%, you can say numerical, easy one, plus all about theory, very easy to score six on six, easily score students get six on six because it's super easy. Determination, this is for again, 12 marks, right. Here it's a mixture. Theoretical part is there. Right, numericals are there, concepts are there, plus diagrams are also there. They have to make graph demand supply like this. Okay, so this one. Again, government budget theory will be there, but you can say 30% numericals will be there. So this and BOP similarly theory plus 30% numericals. This is how your macroeconomics will all about. And in an economy, you know, it's all about your theory. You have to learn theory, theory, theory and the facts and the data. So sometimes you're going to represent that, okay, this is an Indian economy, primary sector is this, you with the help of pie diagrams or something, if you will present it, of course, you're, that will be an edge for you people and you'll be yes, scoring good, right? So this is how your economics look like. So are you people ready for the thing? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. So now I'll give you two minutes, quickly write it down, like your syllabus. I'll just erase whatever I've written. And along with that, just write the marks in case is there, if there are any changes comes like there is a deduction or something in marks or weightage, I'll just let you know, but it will be 40 marks for macro, 40 marks for this and 20 marks will be your project based thing. Okay, just don't write the periods because they are totally different. Just write the chapters. Uh, these are not chapters. These are the units under this, uh, under these units, you have different chapters. Okay, and this is the marks so i'll give you five minutes quickly note down on the very first page of your notebook just write it down okay
students once you are done you'll just let me know ma'am we are done Done. Okay, great. Now let's just move to the next uh, like what we are going to do. We are going to start with the very first chapter, which is money and banking. Okay. So how basically we do whatever unit we will be starting, right? On the very first page, we will write the syllabus, like from where we are starting, and after that, we'll start with the chapter. So similarly, today also we'll do the same thing. So we are going to start with the very first chapter, which is money and banking. Okay. So over here, these, this is a unit. I'm going to divide it into two parts, first part and the second part, right? Now, uh, okay, so over here, we are going to divide just a minute. Sorry. Oh, ma'am. Uh, in our school, they started with the national income unit. And okay. they said by the end of May, we'll have a test which will include the whole unit. So would it be possible for you to start with that unit? Okay. So what we will be doing, like we will just start with this uh, national income then. Okay. But the only thing is that starting. Okay. So by end of the May, they have uh, end of what? April or May? May, May. Okay, okay. So what we are going to do, so basically teaching you money and banking is that this is very simple chapter and within two classes, we'll just finish off this, right? So it's not going to take much time. So this will be the basic for your economics, right? 
So I'll okay. just complete this by I think hardly I'll take uh, two classes for this and two classes for this. That's it. Okay. And after that, if we are like okay with the economics, then we'll just start with the national bank. Is it okay? Okay, ma'am. Right, because that will be something because national okay. income is a very heavy chapter. Heavy chapter in the sense like it is full of numericals, full of theoretical, full of concept and all that. But money is basically very light chapter and very easy and interesting. So just to you know start with a very sweet thing. That's why I just start with money and banking so that you don't feel like that economics is burden. And in easy go, you just complete one unit, okay, and you secure your six marks, okay. So hardly I'll take I think four classes or five classes for this chapter and then we'll just start with the national income only. Okay, I think uh, Vanisha, it's okay with you as well. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we both are in the same class. Okay, okay. You both are friends. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay that's good then <laughs> okay so i think you both are okay so we'll just complete money chapter hardly i'll take one or two class and after that we'll just start with the national income. Okay? okay so let's just start unit number two money and banking so over here this chapter first money is there money means meaning and function we are going to do meaning and the functions then supply of money the second concept over here we are going to do currency held by the public and the net demand deposit held by the commercial bank okay then the next thing is money creation by the commercial banking system. So money creation is basically sometimes some people in some chapters, they are involving this in money chapter, but in some books, they are involving this in this chapter, right? So this is the thing which we are going to take. So first of all, you will write money and banking and then you will write money, this entire thing till here. And when we'll be doing the banking chapter, then we will write the syllabus of banking. Okay. Hello. Okay, both of you done. 
No, ma'am, just a minute. Okay, 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 do it. Done, ma'am. Okay. So now let's just start with our chapter, which is money. Okay. So over here, these are the things. So let's just quickly start. So before starting, I just wanted a clarification from you both. Okay. So let's just start with that clarification only. So who will tell me what is the difference between meaning and definition? Are they both the same thing or is there any difference between meaning and the definition? Ma'am, meaning is like what we understand and definition is something specifically uh, mentioned about that. Okay, close enough. And Ritika, you want to try? Ma'am, I was also going to say something similar to that. Okay, okay, great. So it was cl cl close enough, but not the exact one. Okay, so let's just take an example and with the help of that example, I'll just teach you. For example, this is a picture I showed you. So this is Ritika and this is Vanisha. Okay, so over here, I asked Ritika, like explain this picture. So she said, ma'am, it's a fruit. What this picture, I just asked you what this picture mean, right? So you said, ma'am, it's a fruit, type of fruit. And Ritika, Ritika and Vanisha, they both, she also said that this is a fruit. Okay. But when I uh, like now, I just ask them to taste it. Okay. So Ritika tasted it and Vanisha also tasted it. Ritika said that, ma'am, uh, it is a red color sweet fruit. Red color sweet fruit. Okay. And then Vanisha told me that, ma'am, it is a uh, little bit like uh, not that much sweet, but okay, okay. Like it was sugar free. You said like that. Okay. It was sugar free. So basically, now over here, when I ask the mean, that means meaning. For Ritika also, she said this is a fruit. And for Vanisha also, she, you said that this is fruit. Right? So that means nobody... See, if I'll ask someone else also, the random stranger, they will also say, ma'am, this is a fruit. Nobody will say, ma'am, this is a car. Nobody will say this is a taxi. Nobody will say this is a mobile phone. Right? Everyone will say this is a fruit. So that means for this particular object, what is the meaning? That this is a fruit. Okay? It is... Everyone is going to accept it. Right? It is a universal fact, basically, the meaning. Okay? But coming to definition, now when I'll say according to definition, I'll say according to Rutika, this is a red colored sweet fruit. Okay? According to Varisha, this is a sugar free fruit. Okay? So, what is happening? Definition means how you people are defining it. So, it can vary. According to me, this can be something. According to someone else, this can be something. So definition is basically according to some particular person. Okay. But meaning is all about that. It will be universally accepted. That everyone is going to accept it that okay. Right. See, Ritika tasted it. She found it sweet. But uh, Varisha found it sugar free. Right. So over here, you cannot say that, okay, you are wrong. It was a sweet fruit and you are saying it's sugar free. No, that is definition. But for example, if Anisha said, no, this is a car. So over there, I can ask you that, no, this is not a car. You cannot change the meaning of any particular thing. You can define it, but the meaning will always remain same. So I hope you got it. That meaning is basically that universally everyone is going to accept it. But definition, it's basically according to the person. And so always, whenever we write a definition, you uh, I hope you have noticed this. According to this person, this means this. According to this person, this means these. So that is a definition given by a particular person. How that person is defining that particular object or particular thing. Clear? Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, ma'am
Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now, first of all, we will be doing the meaning and then the definition. Okay, the definition according to person and meaning is basically that nobody go is going to change. Now, as we are doing this, so basically over here, we have to learn in such a way that we have to remember it for the next year, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, if I ask you that, okay, Ritika and Vanisha, introduce yourself, right? Of course, you will introduce yourself that ma'am, my name is Vanisha, I study in this class, uh, my favorite color is this, and uh, like uh, my age is this, like this. These are the four or five important topics that you have to include in introduction part, right? If you will miss any of that, that means your introduction is incomplete, right? So similarly, for money, if I'll ask you, what is the meaning of money? You have to remember these four points. First point, second point, third point, and four point. If you miss any of the point, that means that is an incomplete meaning of money. Clear? So what is the meaning of money? Money is anything which is generally accepted as first, medium of exchange, second, measure of value, third, store of value, and fourth, standard of deferred payment, right? So right now, you people will be like, oh my God, what are these heavy, heavy terms and how will we remember this, right? So don't worry. I'll explain each of the point, why money is known as medium of exchange, why money is known as measure of value, why store of value, and why standard of deferred payment. The only thing you have to remember in the meaning that 2M and 2S, clear? Medium of exchange, measure of value, store of value, and standard of deferred payment, clear? Yes, ma'am. So I hope that's very much yes. clear to you people that this is the meaning of money. Okay. So medium of exchange, measure of value, store of value, standard of deferred payment. Now coming to definition, there were two people who gave the definition of money. So first was Robertson. He said, money is anything which is widely accepted in payment for goods. So money is anything which you accept. See, for example, if you want to purchase a mobile phone, right? If you bought money with you, I'll accept it. But if you bought maybe a gold chain and you said that in return of this gold chain, please provide me the mobile phone. I can reject you. That no, sir, we only accept cash. Right? So over here, but money is anything which is widely accepted in payment for good. If you want to do payment for any good, like if you want to purchase it, so that is the money is that will be widely accepted. And it's not only about India, it's about all over the world. Right? And for example, you have a business. So in a business, either you will sell something or you will purchase something, right? So is it easy? For example, you don't have money with you. So is it easy for you to sell something or purchase something? I think no, right? It's not easy for you. Yes? Yes, ma'am. So over here to discharge, to remove the other kind of business obligation also, you need money. So what is money? He, According to Robertson, he said that money is something which widely everyone is accepting as payment for goods. And basically to remove the business obligation also, this money is being used. Okay. Then there was a person, Kent. He said he was very clever. From the meaning itself, in meaning, we are using four points, right? He was very clever. And he made his definition. He said money is anything which is commonly used and generally accepted as medium of exchange and standard of value. So from four point, he just used two point and made his own definition. Clear? Yes. Right. So I think yes. this Kent one is easy for you people for the definition. Right. So what you will be doing, you will be first writing meaning of money and you will write this. Money is, this is basically the meaning. So you will write meaning of money. Money is anything which is generally accepted as medium of exchange, measure of value, store of value, standard of deferred payment. Then you will write definition and you will write according to Kent, money is anything, this one. I hope it's clear. Right? Yes, oh. Mom, could you repeat it once? Okay, so first of all, you have to write meaning of money. Right? And then you will write this entire thing. And then you will write definition of mean uh, money. Then you will write this one. If you feel like Robertson definition is easy for you, you can learn that. Write this one. If you feel like Kent definition is easy, write the Kent one. Whatever you feel like, it's easy for you. Okay. okay.
डन कर डन okay students so after this you have to do functions of money okay so you will just make it there if i'll ask you what are the functions of money right so you will say now there are two types of there are two functions one is the primary function and one is the secondary function see for example if i'll ask you tell me something about yourself so you will say ma'am i can sing very well like right and i can dance very well i can i have a good drawing skills and all that right so this is basically the introduction from your end but if i'll ask you to write the functions like what are the functions that you can perform so you will say i can sing i can dance i can write i can read like this so similarly this was the meaning of money if i'll ask you what are the characteristics of money so over there the same things come that the characteristics are basically the functions clear so over here the functions are primary function medium of exchange over here you can see the difference that these two were written with a blue color and these two with a purple color so the reason is these are the primary function and these are the secondary functions clear so primary function you will just make a table like this medium of exchange major of value secondary function store of value and standard of deferred payment and then one by one we will be studying what is medium of exchange store of value major of value everything clear yes ma'am Bangda. 
Done. Okay. Now let's just start with the function medium of exchange, and so we'll be first starting with medium of exchange, which is the primary function. So now, students, for every uh, this thing, every function, I'll just explain you with the story. So you have to learn this with the story only. Okay. So now let's just start with the first function. See over here, primary function is now first question is ma'am, what type of question comes from here? So either if you are lucky enough, you will get a direct question. What is money? And what are the functions of money? So over here, it will be for three marks basically and sometimes for four, five marks, right? That, okay, this is the money and these are the functions of money. So over there, you have to explain everything. But sometimes they ask you even for two marks or for three marks, they ask you, how can you say that money act as medium of exchange? So over there, you have to explain this, okay? That we can say that over there, you have to add some word. Right, that we can say that money act as medium of exchange as because this is the basic function of money as today all that you have to add few things, right? But for three marks, either you will be or sometimes they ask you explain the following functions of money a medium of exchange and b standard of deferred payment like this. So these type of questions come from this, okay? And it's very easy to score well because you have everything with you. Okay, so let's just start. First function is medium of exchange. Over here, this is the most basic function of money. See, if I'll ask you, you have money. So if I'll ask you why you need money. So the very first thing you will say that, ma'am, I need money because I want to purchase car. I want to purchase mobile phone. I have to pay fees, something like that, right? So similarly, medium of exchange is all about that. This is the basic function of money. I've written as today, all exchanges takes place in term of money. Now the question is, ma'am, why you have written as today? Earlier, is there, there was a something different thing or like why you have written as today? So yes, earlier there was a system which is known as barter system. Okay. Over there, what was happening? For example, I am someone who has apples with me. And this is someone, this is a person who is selling coconuts, right? So over here, if I need coconut, I'll give him one kg apples. And in return, he will give me one kg coconut. So this was a barter system. Goods to goods. That means in return of goods, you will get the good. Clear? So that's why. But now today there is no barter system. Today you have money. So you can purchase it from everywhere. So that's why I've written as today all exchanges. Exchanges means you will give money and in return you will get something. Right? They take space in terms of money. And money helps in buying and selling of goods and services. Okay? So now the thing is that I told you about the barter system. Uh, from your slavers, barter system has been diligent, but we need to know some idea because sometimes they mix the question and they frame a new question. So that's why. For example, uh, I want apples. Okay. Uh, no, for example, I want mangoes. Okay. I am the one who has apples. So this is person A, this is person B, and this is person C. Okay. This person, like I want mangoes. Okay, this is what I want. So I just went to this person. He was also sell selling mango. He was also selling mango and he was also selling mango. So I just went to him and I asked him that, sir, I just need one kg mango. So in return of my apple, please provide me mangoes. So he said, no, no, no. I'll sell my mango to someone who will give me coconut in return. So he just rejected that. He will not take my offer that in re return of my apples, he'll give me mango. So he rejected. I went to some other person. I said that, sir, I request you to please give me one kg mango in return of my apples. So he said, no, 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 I want grapes. So I'll give my mangoes to someone who is willing to give me grapes. So he also rejected me. But third person, luckily, he was willing to give me apples. So he said, okay, give me apples and take my mangoes. So this is what, right? So over here in the barter system, there was a problem of double coincidence. Double coincidence. That means whatever I am willing to sell, the person from where I am purchasing something, he is willing to buy and he is willing to sell, right? So there should be both the partners, like I and he, they both should, like whatever I want to sell, he want to buy and whatever he want to sell, I want to buy. This should be the situation. Only then I can do the trade or something, right? But with money, for example, this is shop A, this is shop B, this is shop C. So if you have money, you can purchase from this shop, this shop and this shop. Any shop you can purchase. Right? Yes, no girls? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So that's why medium of exchange means this is the most basic function of money. Why? As today, all the exchanges takes place in terms of money. Money helps in buying and selling of goods and services. 
Clear? Now, next is measure of value. See, earlier what was happening for 1 kg apples, I was getting in return 1 kg coconuts, right? See, the price of apples is 90 rupees per kg and for coconut, it is 100 rupees per kg. Okay, so it's not same now. For example, 10 rupees per kg. So it's not same, right? So similarly, the problem is earlier, there was nothing to measure the value, right? But now you have money, so you can easily express that, okay, this is the price of this particular thing and this other thing, right? So what is money doing? Money is measuring the value of goods and services and helps in sale and purchase of goods and services. Goods means, for example, if you wanted to purchase a mobile phone, right? So if you are going to purchase the iOS one, the Apple one, so of course you have to pay 1 lakh rupees a good amount. But if you are purchasing a simple Android one, then you don't have to pay much, right? The least one. Right. So over here, basically, the thing is that how come you know that this is more expensive and this is less expensive by the value. Right. This is for one lakh rupees. So you can measure. OK, my God, one lakh rupees too much uh, for this. Uh, it was 10,000 rupees. So you are like, OK, it is cheaper. Right. So and also services, for example, the teachers or the doctors, they are providing you services. So there are different types of schools and different types of hospitals. So every, so for example, for one day, the bed charge for this particular hospital is 10,000 rupees. For this hospital is 20,000 rupees. So you got to know that according to your budget, you will go wherever you feel like it's according to your budget, it's suitable, right? So how it is possible? It is possible because of money only, right? If there is a money, because in terms of money only, you are measuring the value and you can decide what is fit for you and what is easy for you, right? So first line, what you will write, you will write money measures value of goods and services and helps in sale and purchase of goods and services. Still here, you have to write the same thing that money measures on this. Now, you have to remember a story. For example, this is a simple mall, like a good mall. You just went there and there was a beautiful dress, right? So this is you. You went there. You really like the dress. So you are like, there was a salesperson and this is a person who will uh, who'll do the billing and all that. So there's a salesperson. So you went there and you asked me, so what is the value of this particular thing? Right? What is the value of this dress? So he told you, ma'am, this dress is for 10,000 rupees. He told you the price of the dress. So you're like, okay, I really like this. I'll purchase it. You went to the billing counter and over there you gave the money. Clear? So this is a story you have to remember. You went to a shop. Over there, you saw something. You asked the salesperson for the value. What is the value of the particular product? He told you the price. And once you are satisfied with the product and all that, you just made a payment in form of money. So the value of each goods and services is expressed as its price, right? If you want to know the value, you should know the price. And the price of all goods and services are expressed in terms of money. So what is happening? Value of goods and services are expressed in terms of price and price of all goods and services are expressed in terms of money. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Right? So this is what you have to remember. Value is expressed in terms of price and price is expressed in terms of money. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now you will just write primary function. First write the medium of exchange. Okay, and after that, the second function.
Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Uh, Ma'am, for the second point of the measure of value, yes. should we write the whole point or till the goods and services? Uh, no, no, you have to write the whole point. Because you have to make, okay. uh, like you have to add few words. So money measures, this one is very important because it's a basic function. Then you have to explain why you are saying like that. So entire thing. Okay. 